Hi guys, I'm here with Farhana Pura, the girl behind Naforer. So would you like to tell us like your name and like just about you? Okay, my name is Farhana. Um, I started Naforer uh, right about 10 years ago. Um, I've always wanted to uh, have a fashion brand um, ever since I was really, really young. And w what made me start uh, Not For Air was basically the Spice Girls. I was very much inspired by the 90s pop culture. Mm -hmm. And I've always been um, mesmerized uh, by the city. Mm -hmm. So um, once upon a time, uh, I just took out my sketchbook. I told to myself blatantly, I am going to start a fashion brand at this very date. Wow. And th that's when it all started. So I started back in 2010. Wow, that's uh, yeah. wow 10 years. 10 years, it has been a decade. And it, it feels like 10 days, oh, really? to be honest. I'm still learning, mm -hmm. um, I mean, through, throughout whatever I've, uh, whatever, whatever I've, been through mm -hmm. um, all of the achievements and uh, the clients, it still feels like it's 10 days. So fresh. Very, very fresh. And um, what would you say is like your um, one of your biggest achievements? Because I do know that you um, got featured in British Vogue like mm -hmm. three times. How did you feel when you saw that? Because British Vogue is... British insane. Vogue yeah. is something. I think that that would be one of my biggest achievements. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so how did I get into British Vogue? Uh, so somebody contacted me uh, from obviously the UK <laughs> and they asked me whether uh, I would be interested. Um, I would say, and we, we, were, com we were supposed to commit to three uh, editions. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's three times in a row, mm -hmm. April, May and June. Um, however, there's a backstory behind that. Um, and that would probably be my most proudest achievement. I think it was 2017 and I had three months to work on this project. Uh, a a non-profit organization contacted me, um, Echo Age. Mm -hmm. So Echo Age uh, uh, contacted me through Gmail, G email, mm -hmm. and Obviously, when I read Buckingham Palace Commonwealth Fashion Exchange, I... You're like, yep, I'm there. <laughs> no, I actually did the opposite. I deleted my email. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I thought they were not legit. Mm -hmm. I mean, who would invite somebody from Brunei to mm -hmm. showcase their, their, their pieces in Buckingham Palace, right? Mm -hmm. So they told me that this was for a um, Commonwealth uh, Fashion Exchange project. What, mm -hmm. ba what that basically means is that uh, we each Commonwealth country is paired with another Commonwealth country, okay. um, and we're supposed to collaborate to, uh, to create, a create a piece, an evening piece. My um, partner uh, country was Singapore, so I collaborated with this la uh, this duo. Um, they are both graphic designers. They do. Mm -hmm. Batik print, I believe, um, uh, Luli Cell. So uh, what we wanted to do was we wanted to create a modern Malay woman mm -hmm. piece that basically tells a story about how Singapore and Brunei have the same um, Malay culture. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, well, m more or less, uh, we do. Um, so. We wanted to tell that story about this collaboration. So that's when we showed uh, that modern Malay woman piece in in Buckingham. Uh, oh, wow. So that was really, really good. That night itself was really special because I've met the best people in the fashion industry. Oh, wow. No, when I say the best, it would be Anna Wintour herself. No way. Okay, see, I'm having goosebumps. Yeah, I was Every saying, single time. Goosebumps. Every single time I talk about this, uh, it's... I, I always have goosebumps, and that was two years ago. Wow, um, two years two ago? Two years ago, and Whoa. that was amazing. So yeah, it was a really good experience, and that was my proudest Unreal. achievement ever. So how did the Fashion Designers Alliance come about? It is started by a group of local designers. Mm -hmm. um, they came to me bef just before COVID, and then they asked me, uh, so what do you think about this um, 
this idea and I said oh this is really good because what what I thought to myself as well once upon a time was when, whenever I go out of Brunei people would ask me out, uh, outside and they'll ask me so does Brunei have a fashion industry does it have a market and unfortunately back then I would say there is no industry but there is a market because we have clients we, yeah. there is a demand for fashion now this particular designer himself he came to me and pitched me um, and then I said you know what let's just do it uh, let's just form a, a we'll, we'll go through a list and uh, we'll invite all of these uh, designers who has already made it outside of Brunei and already has a start in, uh, in Brunei itself mm -hmm. and then um, let's just see what what happens uh, so when we when we when all of us met it was just a hangout casual hangout and then we talked about our struggles what we want to do what we would like uh, for the government to support we thought oh okay let's just form a form a, an alliance and say you know here we are uh, we're local uh, we're Brunei fashion designers um, we have good products um, we, ha we have a creative um, brand story we have uniqueness in our in our designs so and we are also off quality uh, and please buy our our designs you know so if you could give uh, one advice to the aspiring designers here in Brunei what would you tell them um, I've always stick to one principle and that is be humble I think I've mentioned this in a few interviews myself that wherever you have reached there's always people out there who can who are and can be better than you um, and there are also people out there who are not as ta talented as you are but they have the motivation mm -hmm. I don't have a fashion design degree or a proper cert I'm not a person who knows how to sew or I don't do the normal fashion design process, but I know where I, what I want and I know where to go.